Hey, how's it going? Do it yourself first. Today I'm going to show you how you can bleed air from your car's cooling system without using any special tools or even a spill-free funnel. But first, let's cover some symptoms of having air inside your cooling system. All right, symptom number one. You may be experiencing uh, high temperatures or overheating while you're driving your car. Next up, you may not be getting any heat coming out of your air vents when you operate your heater. Also another sure sign that you get air inside your cooling system is that you can actually hear the water gushing around inside your dash when you're operating your vehicle. Now your cooling system is supposed to be a closed system. In other words, air is not supposed to be able to find its way in there. Now a mistake a lot of people make is whenever they replace one of the components of the cooling system, like a thermostat or a water pump, or maybe they just replace their uh, coolant, they don't bleed the system properly. In other words, they just add the coolant, put on the radio cap and they go on their way. But that's not the proper way of getting all the air out of the system. In fact, you don't and then you might develop those symptoms we talked about earlier. Also, if you ever see pools of coolant underneath your car, then that means that you got a leak and that's another way air can get inside your system. And the absolute worst case is that you have an internal engine problem, or in other words, maybe a bad head gasket or a cracked cylinder head where combustion gases are escaping into the cooling system. But in that case, you have misfire and a lack of power in addition to overheating issues. All right, so first thing you want to do is to make sure you're parked on a level surface. And it can make the process of bleeding the air out of the system a little easier if you raise and support the front of the car on jack stands, or even easier yet, go and find a hill and park your car at an incline. And that helps because as you know, whenever you mix air and water, air likes to travel to the highest point in the system. Next, you want to get in your car and turn your heater setting to the maximum setting. This will allow you to open up your heater core and hopefully get the bubbles out of there that may be causing you uh, no heat issues. And if you have a mechanical climate control like we got here, you don't need to turn on your fans. But if you have a digital one like this one, and when you turn the heat to the maximum position, your fan doesn't come on, just go ahead and turn it to the lowest setting just to be on the safe side. All right, next we're gonna open our radiator cap, but make sure you do this on a cold, completely cold engine. Because if you do this on a hot engine, hot cooling is gonna come out spraying at you, and that's not gonna be a fun day. And next you want to place your funnel on top here and I have these spill free funnels that make life a lot easier and these come with adapters that will go where the cap was and then help keep the funnel in place while you're bleeding the system. Now I'm going to assume most studio sulfurs don't have one of those but you can just use one of these regular funnels. Now peripherally you want to use one that's a little bit bigger than this or wider than this but basically you just place this here and press it down make sure it's nice and tight. But if your funnel is a little bit small and it's kind of loose here you can just grab some duct tape and wrap it around the bottom of the funnel to make its diameter larger. Next, you just press it on. Make sure it's nice and firm. Actually, before we start adding coolant, I should say that some engines come with a bleeder screw, uh, usually on the thermoset housing or around it somewhere where you can uh, loosen and then start adding coolant. And then when you see coolant come out of that bleeder valve or screw, then you would close it and then go on to keep on adding more coolant. And next, it's time to start slowly adding coolant. Now since we're not using a large funnel, it's very important to stop adding coolant as soon as we see some coolant at the bottom of our funnel. And that's because later on when we turn on the car and the car starts warming up, coolant is going to come up in this funnel and if you start it with the coolant here, then it's going to overflow obviously. So you want to start off with the coolant as low as possible. And next before we even start the car, we're going to squeeze our radiator hoses and sometimes this allows you to add more coolant. Next, after we can't add any more coolant with the engine off, we're gonna turn on the engine. Again, now once you got the engine started, if the coolant level drops, you wanna keep adding coolant, but again, go very slow. So again, you can squeeze your upper and lower radiator hoses to get air bubbles out of the cooling system. Something else you can do to dislodge air bubbles is to rev your engine up and down. And you want to keep doing this until your cooling fans come on and off twice. It generally takes about 50 to 20 minutes based on the, your ambient temperature. Now if your car has a mechanical fan like this one, and in that case you want to wait until both your upper and lower radiator hoses feel the same to the touch or the same temperature. And that's going to mean your thermostat has opened and your car has reached operating temperature. And a few minutes after that you can turn off your car. Also, in order to help your car reach operating temperature more quickly, you can just keep the RPM at about 15 to 2,000 RPMs. All right, both our lower and upper radiator hoses feel about the same to the touch, and that's gonna mean our thermostat has opened now. And that's good because the coolant is getting pretty close to the top of this funnel, so I'm just gonna wait another few minutes before I turn off the car. 
All right, next we grab our bucket. And then we grab something long like the screwdriver. And then we wrap a rag around the end of it. And then we stick it at the bottom of this funnel. And be very careful, this coolant is very hot. And then get it out of the way. And that's all there is to it, folks. If you have the luxury of time and money, though, go ahead and buy yourself one of these, about 25 bucks, and they will save you a lot of trouble. But if you don't and decide to use one of those regular funnels, just make sure that it stays nice and firm in place. You know, you don't tip it over by accident. And if you do, you're quick enough to jump out of the way because that coolant gets uh, really hot and could really hurt you. And also, if you do this and you still have uh, no heat coming out of your uh, heater, uh, there's other things that could cause that and I put a link to a video I made covering all those on this side of the screen along with uh, other videos that you might find interesting but if you find it, this video interesting please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you want to see more like it and I'll see you next time thanks for watching